my, my company is called Alma Borealis, but it's me, the company. There's, um, so it's um, a one woman band. <coughs> so how this came about was I was doing my, my BA and my math, actually doing my master's course and I was looking into, I've got a child and I, she was in a Montessori school at the moment, at that time sorry, a nursery, and I was really sort of interested in the Montessori and Steiner and um, uh, early learning theories of how, how, how they saw how the children learn best. And I was particularly interested in this Best of Lotsis ideas um, where it's all about the inter interconnectivity. And I can read this quote uh, to you. Man lives in a world of objects which influence him and which he desires to influence. Therefore, he ought to know the objects in their nature, in their conditions, and in their relations, relations with each other and mankind. <laughs> so it's this idea of, um, of knowing what our material surroundings is made of, and therefore linking it to the sustainability where if we know what we have around us, then we know how to or not look after it. Um, and um, it really, I was sort of looking at the first fashion and how much there is, it's bad for the environment, there's garment worker issues, and also bad for creativity. Because what I've sort of been thinking about is that there is a real lack of craft education in schools particular and in homes too now. We don't make things the way we used to make and I feel like this is driven by the mass manufacturing because we don't have a need anymore to make or even sew on a button or repair things. So together these two things are sort of, we're losing the skills and the incentive to connect to our material environment and in this case the clothing that I'm talking about. Um, Glenn Adamson, uh, a historian, a craft historian and an author, he talks about this material intelligence and he suggests that if we together as a collective had material intelligence that would help us um, slow down the climate challenges as we would become to value the objects and the materials more. And this leads me to thinking about what I'm doing, I'm, I'm designing for children and having those thoughts in my mind and thinking how do we connect children to clothing better? Um, how do I as a designer create clothing that is beneficial rather than takes away? And during my masters I looked um, at Montes Maria Montessori's work, the, particularly the dressing frames where children button up and lace up and mimic the things that they might use in their clothing to sort of prepare them for independent dressing. Um, also I was really interested in the, the um, open-ended toys and this um, particular one is Alma Sheertuf Busher who used to be at the Bauhaus and she created these blocks and sort of multi-directional and open-ended uh, toys for the children to create whatever they wanted. Um, and also Frederick Chapur, who was also thinking um, along these lines that they that the adults provide these multi-faceted instruments for children to explore by themselves without this guided um, um, sort of thoughts of put upon them what they should be doing with these objects. Um, and I really felt like <laughs> clothing could offer some of this. Um, to some, and sometimes to me too, it felt a bit far-fetched, but then there was something that really linked it together. Um, why shouldn't clothes be like blocks or open-ended tools? Because actually they are made of blocks, they're made of pieces, just like a block but flat. Um, so, oh. So I created Puzzleware, um, where I decided that I'm going to test this concept of breaking the garment down into puzzles and, and then um, children can be invited in creating their own. 
Um, and the ideal concept really was, sorry, this is a bit small actually. Um, I'm going to show you that they're slightly larger. But you can see, oh, I've got a pointer. See that one? Yes. So this sort of spiral of a life cycle of a garment, that it starts from, in this case, it's wool that I use. So it starts from the earth, and then, it, um, then it's um, created by the sheep made into yarn, and then it's made into this puzzle kit. And then the idea is that um, the children can have one first garment, for example, a tea top. Oops, I can't point and talk at the same time. Um, it can be extended there, and as they grow, they can extend it again, uh, modify it, repair it potentially, or add a pocket, uh, customize it, and then um, once it's sort of been worn and worn throughout the years, um, it could be felted in the wash and then turned into, these are, sorry, these are minuscule. There's a beanie and then there's a funny octopus toy and then there's a funny cushion. So once you've felted it, you can make it into a soft toy and stuff it <laughs> in itself so that you then contain that, those memories and those adventures that you've had with that garment in, in a different form. So actually that garment never, never loses its, uh, its, um, be its existence in, in life. Or if it does, it can be used for um, stuffing or it can be composted. So this is like the utopic idea that I find, I feel like um, it might be possible. Um, and then I started to explore is to sort of what, to what extent is it possible? To what can I offer to a, uh, a parent is it um, commercial? Is it a workshop? And that's really something that I've been doing for, um, it's a non-stop process, this developing and iteration of it. But here I'm gonna just show you how the, in a slightly closer, it's a slightly closer view of, so you can start with three, four panel pieces that create a T-top, and then um, extending it along the growth spurts, um, or whether it maybe it's for winter, from winter to summer, or taking off sleeve, I, um, the sleeve extensions for summer or, or spring. Um, in Scotland, definitely, you could wear this throughout the year. Um, or adding, adding more as you grow or when you get colder. Um, and then that jumper can turn into a skirt if you want to pass it on to um, a sister or uh, somebody who wants to wear a skirt. And, um, so that's, that's kind of the idea. And then I was thinking how would, before I came up with this sort of sewing idea, because that adds um, another element to the project, I was wondering how the children could put these things together. Would it be poppers? Would it be eyelets? Would it be um, anything that needs to be created? Um, and I thought those poles are hazard, potentially they're small, potentially they fall off, and there's another mechanical thing. And I thought, well, let's just take it back a step again, and why not um, invite the children to actually sew these pieces together um, as previous generations would have done. Um, and I designed this kit with a wooden needle um, that's chunky, and I've got a few examples of that too. It's really tactile and it's lovely to use, and using that with the wo chunky woolen yarn, it's a really lovely sensory experience to, to put those woolen panel pieces together. You can actually all have a go afterwards if you want to, because um, there's something, the sound of that woolen yarn coming through that wo those woolen panels, it's really soothing. and. Um, uh, it, it's a really nice sort of um, experience. Um, and then I was wondering, am I doing, what am I doing here? Am I guiding, am I telling kids what to make? Or are they, do they actually get to design their own? Do they just make what I tell them to make? And here is, I think, where the agency comes to play quite a lot, is that initially I thought I'm giving children agency over their clothing if I get them to make what I've designed and yes maybe that is true to a certain extent but I thought well actually maybe there's room to move that a bit further and I could actually invite them to design their own clothing as well the, the kits so this for example is a beanie kit that is guided um, I thought I'll test 
both ways. And um, it's a super simple thing. It's got two rectangle panels, a guidebook, a yarn, and then you've got practice cards, a wooden needle. The practice cards are stitch cards that show you four basic stitches, hand stitches. Um, so then they can take their, the, the stitch model, if you like, to the beanie and finish it off with a pom-pom. So this is a guided version. Um, and I think this is good for a particular child, particular parent, particular character. But also there is room to, to explore this idea like Lego or like a Brio block set where they can just pull out anything they want from a bag and just um, do whatever they feel clothing is, make whatever they feel clothing is for them, or it not, doesn't even necessarily have to be clothing. It could be completely abstract. So um, again, this is, a, this is one of the um, puzzle kits uh, that are um, non-guided, and from that you can create, somebody made a little, a little top, decorated with tassels and um, and this panel here is full of lace holes so you can embroider, you can basically draw on that with yarn. So there's um, room to maneuver in there. Um, so that's just one iteration of, of I mean, there, it's, there's endless opportunities, endless color options, endless texture options. So I'm constantly kind of um, in a battle with myself of going, what do I, what do I, what to actually make. Um, but in essence, the clothes become these play things. They become these, um, they, the, the children are offered an opportunity to explore clothes unlike they are previously perceived um, as you buy them from a shop. Um, they, uh, children can explore what it is, what clothing is, what could it be, and what, what it means to them and maybe what it means to their sister, brother or cousin or their pals. Um, new ideas can form and some of the things that are really important um, is the transformation from a two-dimensional to a three-dimensional thing. So from these flat panels that you see on the floor, you can create a three-dimensional item that you can dive in. It's quite a magical process. Um, the, there's autonomy, there's independence from the industry. The child might not, at a young age, understand what they're doing, but they're creating independence, removing themselves from being pushed. Well, pushed is maybe a little bit hard, but they're, they're creating this, this uh, gap between um, somebody telling them that they can't, but they can. Um, and um, also there's the dexterity and um, sense of achievement, all these things that are involved um, in this. Um, also, the, the, this idea of connecting to your, to your material environment and um, understanding how clothes are made. So once you understand how they are made, referring to Glenn Adamson's um, ideas about material intelligence. Once you understand, then you are able to make informed decisions and um, in, uh, in later life. Um, so for me, I as a creative practitioner, I get a huge sense of satisfaction um, playing with these puzzle pieces. For me, I realize that um, I, don't, I don't really want to do anything else in my life anymore but make loads of puzzle pieces and then play with the compositions of them. They sort of, and I, I and that happens with the, in that experience when a child does that too. So there's, it's not just a garment, it becomes something, it, it starts off something else. There's lots of um, depth and layers that can be explored before it becomes something else. And again, then it can be transformed from whatever it was into something completely different. But as a flat piece, there's something there. Um, you can arrange them into random compositions that you feel like doing that day. Um, they look um, they look great in scrolls. <laughs> they look, um, depending on the sort of um, 
shapes of the garments. There's just a lot of tactility in there, um, all round. And this is a jumper, actually, that was a commission for an adult. Um, and so that is a jumper kit, but from that jumper kit, you get these other layers um, of tactility and visual stimulation. And then I, um, I've got this slide here where the adults are, they ordered two from me and um, I was particularly keen on this, <laughs> this idea because I think that, that I intended this for children originally and um, well, I had this in my arm all the time because I was supposed to look at something which I forgot. Um, oh, I intended it for children but then slowly it's been picked up by adults and particularly um, this lady here, she works with um, chronic pain uh, patients and she suggested to me um, that this would be something that would be really useful in that kind of work as well because not just from the kind of the tactile, the dexterity in making and the mindfulness of sewing but also from the calming effect of wearing the wool uh, around you because it has this magical caress feel when you wear it. So, um, so it's kind of gone from, my project has kind of gone from um, thinking about why children don't have agency over their own clothing. Adults tell them what to wear, adults design what they wear um, into children's um, I, I allow this, I, I offer this opportunity for children to become participants in, in creating their own clothing, but it's taken kind of, it's gone back into adults wanting to also create their own clothing. So there's a, there's, it's quite interesting what's happened um, in, in the run of the, in, during this project. And I call it a project because although I am selling some pieces commercially, I'm no, by no means a, a um, a big operation, it's just myself and so I, I refer it to a cottage industry and I, what I'm most interested about, uh, about is the, um, the, these workshop experiences that I've managed to run before Covid, a few, and then it all kind of um, stood still. But what I really want to extract from it is how the children are feeling when they're creating the, when they're, when they're designing these pieces, when they're sewing these pieces together, when they wear them, when they, that moment when they put on something that they have transformed from a flat 2D th piece into a 3D piece. Um, and also, I would love to follow up five, ten years along in a child's life or a group of children, how these are perceived and what, I, I guess my, one of the biggest questions is that can, if you are involved in making your own clothing, how does that affect you in later life? Um, and let me just check my notes if I've missed anything. But I think that's probably more or less. I think I. Oh, hmm, that's okay. <laughs> um, later on, um, um, the initial inspiration was Montessori and, um, and Froebel and later on I realised the link between Simon Nicholson's Loose Paths play as well, where the children are, um, it's important that, that, that children are able to participate in constructing their material world and I think that really links to that Pestalozzi quote in the beginning where it's really important. It's, it's, I would say it's crucial and this used to happen through just having to live your daily life um, um, handling materials and making things and, and hammering um, household items just to survive and for the necessity. We knew what we were dealing with. We knew wood from non-wood and wool from cotton and, um, and it's just, um, we're losing all of that and I think that um, it's a really important matter to bring it back and it is coming back, it's coming back in, in, a, in quite a strong, there's a strong wave of, of all that, yeah. So I personally as a designer, yeah, want to take a sort of a back seat and let the children design, not because I'm lazy, <laughs> because, but because I want them, I don't need to show, I don't need to prove anything, I just want them to 
have um, that opportunity to to really be involved and I'm developing a system where the children can actually design their own kits and I do that because I'm thinking mm -hmm. it's um, it's like you like these avatars or kids games where they can go swish 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 a, a purple wig a, a green wig and that color pants and that color socks and I feel like if I managed to do that um, where they could uh, create design out of out of the pieces that I've designed, they could collate their own kits. And that's yet again one step um, more of agency for them. Yeah. And I think I will leave it at that. He's not doing a rude sign by the way. <laughs> just just to um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.